well. It's getting late, isn't it? And it's time for all good citizens to be getting ready to go to bed. Would you like me to read you a bedtime story? Of course you would. Well, gather round, citizens, gather round, and I'll tell you a bedtime story. Tonight's story is called Little Red Riding Hood. Once, a young woman was told by her older sister to bring a pie and some milk to their mother, who lived in the forest. The young woman was known as Little Red Riding Hood, because she was not very tall, and she liked to wear a red cloak that her mother had knitted for her, because it went with her red, red hair and her red, red mouth. As she was walking through the forest, a wolf came up to her, for in those days wolves roamed free in the woods. The wolf asked her, Hello, little English girl. Where are you going? Little Red Riding Hood was not afraid of wolves, and she had a very good knife in her basket. I'm going to my mother's house in the woods, said Little Red Riding Hood. Ah, which path are you taking? asked the wolf. The low road or the high road? The low road, said Little Red Riding Hood, for it was the shortest. Ah, then we must short part ways, said the wolf. For I'm taking the high road. And Little Red Riding Hood took the low road, and the wolf took the high road. But the wolf could travel very fast when he wanted to. And though he was travelling on the high road, running up and down the ridges overlooking the forest, he reaches Little Red Riding Hood's mother's house long before Little Red Riding Hood was even in shouting distance, and while the sun was still high in the sky. Knock, knock, said the wolf in a not very good imitation of Little Red Riding Hood's voice. Who's there? asked Little Red Riding Hood's mother. It's uh, the Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf. We don't sound a little bit like my daughter, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I'm hoarse and out of breath, for I've been running away from the wolf who lives in the forest. Please, let me in, because I can see him coming for me. Oh, no, said the wolf. Well, you'd better come inside, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother, and she opened the door. And the wolf quickly cut her throat and poured her blood into a bottle. He ate most of her, but saved some of the juiciest cuts. These he sliced onto a platter, but he was very good with a knife, even for a wolf. Then the wolf put on the mother's pyjamas and got into bed. I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. Tune in tomorrow evening and I'll tell you the rest of the story of Little Red Riding Hood. It's a lovely story and I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest of it. For now, this is Jack Worthing saying good night all and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>
This is delicious, she said. Squeak, said a mouse. You're eating your mother's flesh. Awesome mice, they're always lying, said the wolf. Anyway, you can't be picky about your foods these days. Throw your other shoe at the mouse, and he'll never bother you again. So Little Red Riding Hood threw her right shoe at the mouse and killed it. It never bothered her again. Well, what should I do now, Mother? asked Little Red Riding Hood. Take off your clothes and get in the bed with me, said the wolf. Well, what should I do with my apron? asked Little Red Riding Hood. So it is a fire. You won't need it any more. So Little Red Riding Hood threw her apron in the fire. What shall I do with my dress? she asked the wolf. So it is a fire. You won't need it any more, said the wolf. So Little Red Riding Hood threw her dress in the fire. What shall I do with my petticoat? asked Little Red Riding Hood. Throw it in the fire. You won't need it any more. So Little Red Riding Hood threw her petticoat in the fire. That is good enough, said the wolf. Cut it here, next to me. So Little Red Riding Hood got under the blankets with the wolf. Oh, mother, said Little Red Riding Hood, what big eyes you have. Or the better for seeing you in the dark, said the wolf. Oh, mother, said Little Red Riding Hood, what a long nose you have. Or the better for smelling you, said the wolf. And don't you smell delicious, my sweet? Oh, mother, said Little Red Riding Hood, what long teeth you have. Or the better for eating you, my dear, said the wolf, and he ate her right up. And then he ran off into the forest and was never seen again. Little girl, this seems to say, never stop upon your way. Never trust a stranger friend. No one knows how it will end. As you're pretty, so be wise. Wolves may lurk in every guise. Handsome they may be, and kind, sweet or charming. Never mind. Now as then, tis simple truth. Sweetest tongue hath sharpest tooth. <laughs> and that's the story of Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. What a wonderful story. I hope you enjoyed hearing it as much as I enjoyed reading it. Do you want to know what the real moral is? The real moral of the story is, don't go out at night or the wolf will kill you. And I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. Tune in again tomorrow for another bedtime story. Good night all. See you tomorrow. Uh -huh.